Greetings, fellow mathematicians, and welcome back to the Art of Integration. We've been leading up to this integral over the past two problems in the Art of Integration. So if you haven't checked these out yet, I have them linked down below in the description, and we go through everything we need in detail to be able to solve this integral. Now, the substitution that works for these types of integrals, which involve rational functions that contain powers of sines and cosines, we use the substitution t equals tangent of x and the connection, why we want to use that substitution, the derivative of tangent is secant squared. Now, I like to think of secant squared equivalently as 1 over cosine squared, and we're going to use that to guide us through the algebra. Now, in the previous two problems, we multiplied by 1 in different forms, and we took guidance by looking at the power of cosine that we have in our integral. This problem behaved like cosine squared, so we multiplied by 1 in the form 1 over cosine squared divided by 1 over cosine squared. The last problem, the denominator behaves like cosine to the fourth power, so we multiply by 1 in the form 1 over cosine to the fourth divided by 1 over cosine to the fourth. And if we go to our integral now, we have cosine cubed squared. That behaves like cosine to the sixth power of x. And that's going to be how we multiply by 1 here. 1 over cosine to the sixth divided by 1 over cosine to the sixth. So let's go ahead and write that out first, and then we'll get through all the algebraic simplification. All right, so I'm just going to write down the original integral. We have sine cubed of x plus cosine cubed of x squared in the denominator. In the numerator, we have sine squared of x times cosine squared of x. And now we're using one of the best tricks in the mathematical handbook. We're going to multiply by 1. And how we're going to think of 1 here is our denominator behaves like cosine to the sixth power of x. Let's multiply by 1 in the form 1 over cosine to the 6th power of x, and we divide by the same thing to multiply by 1. All right, and from here, we have a lot of simplifications to get through. Now, what we need to do is recognize this 1 over cosine to the 6th. We're going to distribute that into this denominator. Your 1 over cosine to the 6th power of x in the numerator, we're going to split that apart. We have basically three factors of cosine squared. One factor we're going to put under sine squared. Another factor we're going to put under cosine squared, which will cancel out. And then another factor we're going to put next to the differential dx. So that way we can implement our substitution. All right, so how we're thinking of here, this term, 1 over cosine to the 6th power of x, think of this as 1 over cosine squared of x times 1 over cosine squared of x times 1 over cosine squared of x. And each of those three factors of 1 over cosine squared are going into different spots. All right, that's going to be the easy part. The hard part here is getting that 1 over cosine to the 6th power of x to simplify this denominator. Let's go ahead and work that out right over here, and then we'll get to evaluating the integral. For something like this, you always want to take your time. There are always several equivalent ways to simplify this. I like here to make use of 1 over cosine to the 6th. You might like to factor out cosine cubed here and work with it that way. It's all the same. All right, so let's go ahead and take this 1 over cosine to the 6 and multiply it to that denominator. So I'm going to write this as sine cubed of x plus cosine cubed of x squared. And we're putting that factor of cosine of x in the denominator. We're multiplying that over, so we'll put that in the denominator here. All right, now the key to implement your substitution, which is going to be t equals tangent of x, 
we need to have in our integral tangent of x somewhere in our integral. All right, we're going to get that here. We're going to think of cosine to the sixth. I'm going to think of that as cosine cubed squared. That way we can make use of some basic exponent rules. So let's write that as cosine cubed of x squared. And we're going to keep the numerator the same. So sine cubed of x plus cosine cubed of x squared. And now, using basic exponent rules, the numerator is squared, the denominator is squared. We can go ahead and write that as a single fraction with a square on the outside. So let's go ahead and write that. And then we'll be able to simplify and get tangent of x inside. So our numerator inside that square is going to be sine cubed plus cosine cubed. And now we have in the denominator of that square cosine cubed of x. All right, and if we go ahead and simplify, we're going to divide that into two separate fractions sine over cosine, that becomes tangent. Sine cubed divided by cosine cubed, that should be tangent cubed. And if you divide the other term, cosine cubed divided by itself, that cancels to 1. And that's how we make use of these factors of either secant to the sixth power of x, or as I like to use it, these factors of 1 over cosine to the 6th power of x. Both methods are equivalent. This might be a little bit faster as you take those three factors and distribute them in different spots. All right. Let's go ahead and write this out where we get with that. All right. So keep in mind here, we had 1 over cosine to the 6th. One of those factors we're going to put underneath sine squared. Sine squared divided by cosine squared, that's going to become tangent squared. All right, another factor is going to distribute to put under cosine squared of x. That's going to cancel to 1. And then your other factor of cosine squared, we're going to put that next to the differential dx. So let's write that as 1 over cosine squared of x dx. The factor of 1 over cosine to the 6th power of x in the denominator, we distributed, distributed that in here, and we found that that simplifies to tangent cubed of x plus 1 squared. And that is our denominator. So we get tangent cubed of x plus 1 squared. Now we can implement our substitution. Here we can make the substitution t equals tangent of x because the derivative of tangent is going to be secant squared or 1 over cosine squared of x. And we should get a very basic integral at this point. If we go ahead and rewrite our integral from x now in terms of t, our numerator here, that's going to be t squared. In the denominator, we're going to get t cubed plus 1 squared. And then 1 over cosine squared of x, or secant squared of x times dx, that becomes dt. And at this point, we have a straightforward integral that we can solve with a substitution. Let's go ahead and use the substitution u equals t cubed plus 1. All right, if we go ahead and calculate the differential, you'll get du equals 3t squared dt. We have a factor of t squared dt. Let's divide the 3 over. To get one-third du equals t squared dt. 
and we should be able to rewrite this integral in terms of t now as a simpler integral in terms of u. It's like we have a factor of 1 over 3. t squared dt, that's converting now to 1 third du. And here in the denominator, we're going to get u squared. So we get 1 third, 1 over u squared du. And that we can easily integrate by rewriting it as 1 third u to the negative 2 du. And we just apply the basic power rule here. So the 1 third is a constant multiple. And if we go ahead and integrate, find an antiderivative for u to the negative 2, add 1 to the exponent, you'll get u to the negative 1, and then divide by the new exponent. So divide by negative 1. We're going to back substitute, and I'm going to rewrite this to make it as easy as possible and to get a nice looking antiderivative. Let me write that as 1 over u. And now we just need to go through our various substitutions. First, we're going to back substitute u in terms of t, u was t cubed plus 1. And originally, we made our substitution for t in terms of x as t equals tangent of x. So we just back substitute one last time, and we get as our antiderivative here negative 1 over 3, and then 1 over tangent cubed of x plus 1. And don't forget your integration constant, plus c. And there we go. Again, the previous two problems led up to this one. And you can get through a lot of other ones using a similar substitution. Hope you enjoyed the problem. If you did, check out the other videos I have in the Art of Integration, where we go through other creative substitutions. That way, we're going to build your mathematical problem-solving skills through the Art of Integrating. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, support the channel, like and subscribe.